Greetings, fellow scholars of the livestream. I'm Kudukuma from Cosmo Canyon Observatory, back with a continuation of game analysis number 28. This promised to deliver more analysis of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth First Look teaser trailer, so this will be just that. In this video, we'll dig deep into the dialogue spoken within and its enigmatic scene transitions. Before we dive in though, let's get some disclaimers out of the way. First things first, Cosmo Canyon Observatory is taking a bit of a new direction. While our small team will continue to bring you Viz's top tier analyses here for your YouTube viewing pleasure, Viz has started a new Cosmo Canyon Observatory substack. You can expect all the same level of detail and theory crafting goodness, just in written form. Subscribers will be alerted when his articles go live, which will be before a new video is added to this channel. Think of it as exclusive access into the CCO pipeline. You'll find the link in the description below, so be sure to follow! Now, back on topic. We know it has been almost a year since the teaser trailer's release, and you probably won't glean much new information from this analysis. Nonetheless, Viz worked hard on this, and all of us at the CCO hope you can at least learn something new or gain a different perspective on certain details. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. This trailer has quite an interesting structure. It is made of four scenes we already talked about in the previous video. However, those four scenes are separated by three transitions, each consisting of glitched visuals and an accompanying relevant question. Both question and visuals are directly linked to the voiceover dialogue in the preceding scene, and therefore act as an extension and emphasis of its core theme. The fourth and last scene is not followed up by such a transition, and therefore does not contain a coherent theme, but instead teases the mystery about Zack's involvement and provides a few more hints for Rebirth. But let's start from the beginning. During the first half of the scene which shows Zack approaching Megar with a still unresponsive cloud, Aerith talks about how the past relates to the future, at least in the English version. What we've done, that's set in stone. The past is forever. But the future, even if it has been written, can be changed. So focus on the future, not the past. This beautifully fits into our conclusion from Game Analysis episodes 23 and 24, where we propose that Remake's events happen in the memories of the planet, and defeating the Whispers, its memory please, has set the changes caused by Sephiroth's and Aerith's meddling into stone, since the Arbiters of Fate are no more and thus are not able to undo those changes anymore. Like Biggs' survival, in the words of Cloud Strife. What's done is done. This covers Aerith's first line. Her second line is confirmation that the future, the original game, Advent Children, and Dirge of Cerberus, already happened and thus exists within the planet's memories. And even though those memories have already been written, they can still be changed as the Arbiters of Fate are not there to course correct anymore. A boon for Aerith and our heroes. The planet's imminent fate, seven seconds before the end of the world, can thus still be averted. But it's also a bane, as Sephiroth can now really do whatever he wants unencumbered by the planet's memory police. Note that Aerith's lines are spoken over a camera dive through mist and livestream particles, following the movements of, supposedly, Angeal's feather and ending with a glimpse of Zack dragging Cloud along on the ground. This increases the connection of Aerith's statement to memories. Interestingly, in other languages, such as the Japanese original and German, Aerith talks about something completely different. Our grief and our anger, they make us stronger, but they change us too. If we keep our minds on the future and not the past. In the Japanese version, Aerith focuses on negative feelings. 
incidentally the same ones that make Cloud susceptible to Sephiroth's influence. Anger about what Sephiroth did to his hometown and mother in the original game. All the anger and hatred I bore him made it impossible for me to ever forget him. That and what he gave me. As well as grief and guilt about Aerith's death and Advent Children, expressed by the geostigma on Cloud's arm, where he also wears the pink ribbon in memory of their fallen friend. That's why they must keep their minds on the future, which they still hold influence over, compared to the past that is set in stone. Clinging to tragic events in the past, both connected to Sephiroth no less, is what made Cloud so easily manipulatable by Sephiroth. Aerith wants to change that. In German, the core of this message is still intact, but it's worded quite differently. We have all experienced so much pain and so much suffering, and all of this unfortunately cannot be undone no matter how much we want to. But this does not apply to our future. Instead of dwelling in the past, we should actively do something against current and future pain and suffering. But that's easier said than done, knowing what's ahead. Aerith's death and the summoning and approach of Meteor. Since Aerith knows about all that, she might want to try and prevent those events. Will she succeed? The following question stinger, bridging to the next scene, beautifully continues this theme. What will become of the planet? With the Japanese subtitles translating to, what is the future of the planet? We already know what happened. No need to dwell on that. What about the planet? What will become of it? What is its future? We don't know. It's what we need to find out. We mentioned in a previous video, Game Analysis number 27, about Zack's role in Rebirth and Beyond. The plot twist about Cloud's messed up memories is not a well kept secret anymore. That's probably why they focus on the planet in this teaser trailer instead of Cloud, especially when combined with the third and last question stinger, but more on that later. Wedged in between Aerith's lines and the Stinger line appears a shot of Meteor crashing into the planet, accompanied by green glitch effects. No holy, no live stream. It's actually the same footage as in Sephiroth's contribution to the Cosmos Theater Showcase in Chapter 16 of Remake, in which he shows Cloud and the others how Mingar is destroyed by Meteor. No holy comes to intervene. Without holy, or even the life stream, what will become of the planet? On the other hand, green glitch effects are usually an indicator of memories which are either false or suppressed. Does that mean that it's a false image or a fabricated premonition of what's to come being pushed into this new future? Or is this a hint towards Sephiroth's goal to succeed this time around? We recommend you check out game analysis number 26 for more information about that topic. The next segment is all about Sephiroth's goal, as revealed by the question stinger at its end. What is Sephiroth's endgame? The other languages are essentially saying the same, so we won't go into them. It's all about his goal. But what is he really after? Just the same shenanigans as in the original game? In the game analysis video essay about Cloud and Sephiroth I mentioned previously, Viz proposed that the remake project could end differently than what it's based on. Possibly in a more final way, bringing the compilation to a close with this fifth installment. However, in this short segment of the trailer, everything we're shown points to a direct retelling of the original story. Even Cloud's statement is in line with this notion. At least, that's what we're led to believe. In all other languages, his lines express the same core message, so we'll only focus on the English version here. He wants to finish what he started. He wants to reclaim his birthright and rule over the planet with Genova at his side. This is in line with the following statement spoken by Sephiroth in one of Cloud's flashbacks in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. In my veins flows the blood of ancients. 
This planet is my birthright. Even more of Sephiroth's lines at the end of the Nibelheim flashback from the original game support the idea that Rebirth won't change Sephiroth's original goal. Mother, let's take this planet back together. I've thought of a great idea. Let's go to the Promised Land. With her superior power, knowledge, and magic, Mother was destined to become the ruler of this planet. I am the Chosen One. I have been chosen to be the leader of this planet. I have orders to take this planet back from you stupid people. For the Cetra. Furthermore, Sephiroth's speech in the Temple of Ancients in front of the puzzle altar is still quite relevant, given what we know from Remake and what's been shown in the Rebirth teaser trailer. Soon, we will become one. It's simple. Once the planet is hurt, it gathers spirit energy to heal the injury. The amount of energy gathered depends on the size of the injury. What would happen? If there was an injury that threatened the very life of the planet, think how much energy would be gathered. <laughs> and at the center of that injury will be me. All that boundless energy will be mine. By merging with all the energy of the planet, I will become a new life form, a new existence. Melding with the planet, I will cease to exist as I am now, only to be reborn as a god, to rule over every soul. Reborn, huh? So you're saying he's working towards his rebirth? However, he first needs to complete the reunion and summon Meteor. Fitting for what scene we were just shown before, and Cloud's lines, we're shown flashes of Sephiroth's eyes, Genova's heart, and a view of its body in the tank. They were directly lifted from Remake Chapter 17 during Cloud's mental break episode in front of Genova's tank just before Sephiroth appears. Viz doesn't think there's much more of substance to say about this. It simply reinforces the theme of this segment. Sephiroth being a crazy mama's boy with illusions of grandeur and a god complex. After a rather tame segment in terms of new content, things slowly ramp up again with the dialogue between Cloud and Tifa, the significance of their lines in regard to the question stinger, and the glitched flash of Aerith. I saw you lying there. I figured it was too late. Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? Cloud's line here expresses in essence the same as in the original game. After he finishes his tale of the Nibelheim incident and Barrett leaves, in response to Tifa's inquiry about her condition after being cut down by Sephiroth. Cloud, how bad was I when Sephiroth stabbed me? I thought you were a goner. I was so sad. Hmm. However, Tifa responds with pure silence as she still thinks Cloud was not in Nibelheim five years ago, directly contrasting her reaction in the Rebirth teaser trailer. Remake already made a big deal out of Tifa's increased inquisitiveness regarding Cloud's mental state and how his recollection of the past does not seem to match her own. In the original game, she never really spoke up about this discrepancy as she was afraid of Cloud relapsing into the state she found him in at the Sector 7 Undercity train station a few days before the first bombing mission with Avalanche. In this new retelling of the original events, everything points towards her prodding much more and trying to get to the bottom of it. Here are a few examples. In Chapter 3, after clearing Scrapyard Boulevard of some vermin and returning to Biggs and Wedge at the Beginner's Hall. Been meaning to ask, after you left the village... <sighs> it's a long story. I've got time. Why don't you tell me all about it while we try to wrestle up some more work for you? During the discovery quest Alone at Last, in Tifa's apartment at Stargazer's Heights in the same chapter. I let you off the hook before, back at the hall, but not this time. 
Oh. Hmm? Well, when we were kids, everybody wanted to be a soldier, right? Yeah, I remember they were on the news every day during the war. Thing is, by the time I finally made it in, they didn't need heroes anymore. It was nothing like what we dreamt of. It was just working for Shinra. Just... I'm sorry. I know it's a touchy subject. Oh. Not exactly small talk. Especially with someone you haven't seen in a while. And in the drum in Chapter 17, when running around with Tifa and Aerith for the first time. Hey, you think Cloud's doing okay? He's been acting really weird lately. More than usual. True. But it's Cloud. I'm sure we'll be fine. But what about you, Tifa? How are you holding up? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm fine. In this last example, Aerith even turns the conversation around instead of indulging in Tifa's worries. We've already established that Aerith knows so much more about everything than she should in game analysis number 24, so she is aware that Tifa was not this inquisitive in the original game's events, and possibly tries to prevent further inquiries about Cloud, as Tifa's not supposed to find out yet. In any case, besides being more involved in getting to the bottom of their memory discrepancy, Tifa's reaction to Cloud's remark in the Rebirth teaser trailer is very poignant to this segment's theme. What is fact and what is fiction? And the translated Japanese subtitle, What is true? Some fans think that Tifa's line about being an imposter is pulled from an entirely different place in the game to throw people off. While there might have been more back and forth between Cloud and Tifa's lines in the trailer, Viz is quite certain that both happen within the same scene. Our good friend Schrodinger's baby seal proposed the theory that Tifa is actually talking to somebody she knows and who thought that she, along with Avalanche, died during the events in Midgar. How is that possible? The idea is that defeating the Whispers also changed all events they intervened in, as if they had never been there. Some of those events include the Whispers saving our heroes from harm or even death, like Aerith falling in the church, Barret being stabbed, or the whole group being blown up twice during the escape on the Midgar Highway. We already extensively covered this topic in game analysis number 27, and Viz doesn't think that that's how this works. Furthermore, no Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer has ever taken seemingly coherent lines of dialogue between two characters completely out of context like this. For example, the Game Awards 2019 trailer plays dialogue between Cloud and Aerith and Cloud and Tifa partially over other scenes, but keeps them coherent and in context. Sephiroth's lines at the very end of the final remake trailer before its release are the only ones that are stitched together from different places in the game. Let us defy destiny together. Cloud, there's still so much to be done. The first line stems from the edge of creation, where Sephiroth extends his hand towards Cloud, asking him to join him in his quest to defy destiny. The second one is spoken in Cloud's mind space after he falls into the Sector 5 Undercity Church at the start of Chapter 8, right before Aerith brings him back to consciousness. But this is just Sephiroth saying Sephiroth things. He could say those lines at any time he shows up and it would not change context significantly or at all. That and everything we already mentioned makes us believe Cloud and Tifa's exchange in the Rebirth teaser trailer happens within the same scene. This being said, the content of Tifa's questions back at Cloud does pose an interesting twist. Instead of Cloud just saying something he's not supposed to know or Tifa remaining silent, this exchange makes it seem like the game is gaslighting Tifa into thinking that she's the one with a memory issue or being a different person now. She was unconscious for a whole month between being attacked by Sephiroth and waking up in Midgar Sector 8 Undercity, 
anything could have happened during that time. Tifa as Sephiroth clone number 53 confirmed? Okay, we don't actually believe Tifa actually thinks like this, but it could distract from Cloud's unreliable narration and shift the scrutiny to Tifa. Is she the one misremembering? In any case, it will sow doubt in Tifa and the player, especially since the story does not have to play out exactly like in the original game moving forward. To round out this truth or fiction segment, glitched flashes of Aerith praying and the holy materia shining on the pond's ground are shown to us. The footage itself is nothing new, as we see it in memory flashes within Cloud's head when Aerith mentions her materia in the church, during Sephiroth's presentation of Meteor Fall in the Shinner Building's Cosmos Theater, and in the battle against Whisper Harbinger. Seeing those two specific shots, Aerith praying and the Holy Materia, does not leave any room for doubt that we're dealing with Aerith's death here. Many fans speculate that she might not die this time around, or that it happens later in the story. However, Viz doesn't think that this is the case. Why? For all the details, you can watch Game Analysis number 26, but the main point is that we see flashes of her praying and the Holy Materia three times in Remake alone, and they are not lifted from any previous entry, like Advent Children. This is different from all other memory flashes shown during the battle against Whisper Harbinger. The shots with Aerith praying and the Holy Materia are specifically created for Remake. Many other newly created shots for memory flashes also depict the truth, like Cloud seeing an explosion and debris falling from the plate support pillar, black hooded people walking through the whirlwind maze, Sephiroth claiming that the planet is his birthright, him in front of Genova's tank in Nibelheim, and more. One that's not known to be true yet is the depiction of Meteor crashing into the planet without Holy or the livestream in sight. Still, this alone is enough evidence for Viz to propose the idea that Aerith will still die in Rebirth, with the possibility that circumstances in Fallout may change a little bit. Take the fact that the shot of Cloud burying Aerith in the pond at the City of the Ancients, the last flash of the future during the battle against Whisper Harbinger, is also directly lifted from Advent Children, like Nanaki running through a valley meteor approaching the planet, and Cloud and Sephiroth clashing. These are all scenes that might play out differently this time since they were depicting a future our heroes want to prevent by defeating the Arbiters of Fate. In the context of the Rebirth teaser trailer, displaying flashes of images related to Aerith's death before showing the words what is fact and what is fiction is quite telling in Viz's opinion. Cloud's retelling of the past is clearly partially fictional, as are many other memories he made up while the Genova cells within him helped him reconstitute his mind into this new mercenary and ex-soldier persona. Eris' death could then represent the fact part of this segment. On the other hand, it's also possible that we're meant to wonder whether her death will happen or not by associating that imagery with the words following right after. This last segment contains not just the most confusing lines in the trailer, but also the most worrying. Zack is certainly much more involved, but to what degree and in what capacity? Only time will tell. We start with Cloud talking about meeting somebody five years ago, somebody who's not around anymore and who Cloud does not know the whereabouts of. At least, in English. You were here with me, five years ago. Where are you? What happened to you? In Japanese, French, and German, however, Cloud specifically mentions Zack's name. Here's the English translation of Cloud's Japanese line as an example. At some point during Rebirth, Cloud remembers Zack. Viz believes Rebirth will not end any later than the summoning of Meteor at the Northern Crater, so this line foreshadows a major change in Cloud's journey. In the original game, 
Cloud does not fully remember Zack until Tifa helps him to put his real memory and identity back together after they fall into the live stream. Although, a first contact is made by Sephiroth showing Cloud the picture of himself, Tifa, and Zack in an illusion of a burning Nibelheim within the whirlwind maze in the Northern Crater. Learning about Zack any earlier than seeing the aforementioned photo will endanger Cloud's mental stability and thus the integrity of the story. Aerith merely mentioning Zack's name in Chapter 8 of Remake almost breaks Cloud's mind, which needs to push any memories of Zack back down immediately so Cloud can keep up his new ex-soldier mercenary persona that is based on the memories of Zack. Even as far back as Chapter 2, a security officer's callout of knowing the Buster Sword causes Cloud's mind to glitch out. While many theories about the placement of Cloud's lines in the teaser trailer exist, Viz personally cannot imagine it happening any earlier than Sephiroth showing Cloud the aforementioned photo. This is where Cloud's mind breaks anyway. Remake made it clear that many segments of the original story will be vastly expanded upon, so it's entirely possible that this illusion segment will experience the same treatment, making room for this line from the teaser trailer and the inclusion of Zack in some shape or form. This would also provide a fitting context to the word here in Cloud's line. Zack was indeed in Nibelheim with Cloud five years ago, and as soon as he realizes this, he's asking for Zack's whereabouts as he hasn't seen him since. Cloud probably doesn't remember Zack's death at that point either, only that he also was present during the Nibelheim incident. But what if Cloud says that line when they visit current day Nibelheim? Is there a way for him to remember Zack at that point in the story and not experience a complete identity breakdown? We say no to that, but elaborating on this would be out of scope for this video. <laughs> Moving on. The next line by Aerith is very clear cut, nothing mysterious about it. Why? Well, it's not that obvious in the English version as it differs a bit from its counterpart in the original game. I'm trying so hard to find you. But in the Japanese version of the trailer, her line is identical to the one in the original, which is the following. Anato sagashiteiru no. Which translates to, I'm searching for you. Just like the original game's English translation. And where does she say this line? During their date at the Gold Saucer while riding the gondola. Will it be the mandatory route this time? Just like Cloud being chosen as Corneo's bride was locked into Remake storyline? Perhaps not. Remake lets you experience different resolution scenes at the start of Chapter 14, depending on how many side quests you completed with Tifa and Aerith in Chapters 3 and 8, respectively. The three Avalanche Kittens Walmart dresses also depend on a row of different factors, so it's completely possible there will still be different dating scenes. Alright, it's time for the most enigmatic line in this teaser trailer. Sorry. Feel like I failed you. Who could he be talking to? Is Zack talking to somebody directly? Or is he just thinking out loud? Hard to say. At least there aren't that many people he would feel the need to apologize to for having failed them, which narrows down the list of possible candidates. The Japanese version of his line provides a different flavor to it. As does the French version. Désolé. Je sais pas comment te dire. It seems like he wanted, or still wants, to help somebody, but was or is not able to. And that's why he failed that somebody. But who? The people most important to Zack are Cloud, Aerith, and Angeal. We find the latter the least likely. Zack might have failed Angeal and his legacy in a way, but there's no real connection to be found in the trailer besides the feather which is absent when Zack says his line. What about Cloud? It depends on which version of Cloud he's talking to. 
The one he brought to Midgar and possibly never fully recovered? Or the one we play as and who eventually descended into despair after having his mind broken and identity shattered by Sephiroth showing him the truth? The latter option would have to happen in some sort of mindscape or livestream connection. Both theories feel a bit too tenuous and full of conjecture. That leaves only Aerith. What if Sack meets her again in the memories of the planet after she dies? As a Cetra, she will retain her sense of self in the livestream, and Zack would thus be able to fully interact with her spirit. If our theory about Zack's essence remaining conscious in the livestream holds up. This would also mean that Aerith's spirit gets trapped in the negative and corrupted livestream if we assume that Zack has been resurrected in there, which would explain the collection of sadness and despair in the church and intermissions post credit scene with Zack. If it is indeed Aerith he's addressing, he must be talking about having failed her as a bodyguard as he was not able to do anything to help and prevent her death, and still doesn't know how to help and fix things. When we look at the lines of all three characters in succession, we see that they are flowing into each other quite nicely. Cloud has his first realization that Zack was there five years ago, the first step in his journey to regaining his true identity. Aerith is also trying to find the real Cloud. He reminds her a lot of Zack because Cloud is emulating him. But it's not the real Cloud. It's a facade he put up, and Aerith aims to break it down and meet the real Cloud beneath it. However, Sephiroth prevents her from completing that quest, which then leads to Zack lamenting about his inability to help and save Aerith since he wasn't physically there. We took apart every single segment of this trailer, so now let's take a bird's eye view on everything we talked about. The lines of dialogue match the context of the scenes they are spoken in. Those contributing to the new mystery happened during the pre-rendered scenes with Zack, and those retelling the original story are used during the flashback scenes which represent the original game quite well, besides Tifa's additional line, which speaks for the expansion of faithful segments. What about the glitched flashes between scenes? Will all three come true eventually? Meteor is bound to eventually reach the surface of the planet, otherwise there won't be any tension. We also see Genova in its tank in the Nibelheim reactor and Sephiroth's crazy eyes after he's gone mad, possibly when cutting down Tifa. Aerith is also still bound to die if the core of the story is supposed to remain. Her living any longer than the City of Ancients will negate so many aspects of the story, themes, and character motivations that it wouldn't resemble the original Final Fantasy VII anymore. The last three lines of the dialogue in the last segment are telling a story by themselves. What about the whole teaser trailer? Aerith starts off juxtaposing the rigid past to the malleable future over imagery related to the life stream. Are we able to save the planet? Then follows the segment about Sephiroth's endgame, which includes Genova and the planet's fate. This is followed up with the question about fact and fiction. What is true and what is a lie? What mind games is Sephiroth playing? Then the trailer ends with Cloud beginning to lose his fragile identity, Aerith trying to find Cloud's true self but failing, and Zack being thrown into despair through failure, represented by the broken Sector 6 plate. All according to plan. At least, that's how Viz interprets this trailer story. What's your take? We'd love to know. Come share your thoughts, alternative interpretations, wild theories, or even criticism of our arguments on the Cosmo Canyon Observatory Discord server. Or leave a comment down below. If you want to stay up to date on all of Viz's breakdowns and analyses, you can catch them first on the new Cosmo Canyon Observatory substack. Up next, he'll be covering the new Rebirth trailer from the Summer Games Fest 2023. You can subscribe to be immediately notified when the next article drops, so don't miss that. But until then, take care. Kudukuma, signing off.